techniques for improving your models and animation. In this tutorial video, we'll cover purchasing, downloading, and importing a three-dimensional model, using an image as a template, creating a substructure, using the revolve command, using the extrude command, creating triangle and quad surfaces, and coloring your substructures. To purchase and download a 3D model, visit httpmodels.vibetech.com or click on the 3D Models tab from our Vibrant Technology homepage. The 3D Model Store is ever-growing and the large majority of models are free. Simply add the models you wish to purchase or download to your cart. Once you are verified as having a current software license, you will automatically be sent an email with a link to download your model. To open your downloaded VTPRJ in Emiscope, move your cursor over the Project tab. The tab will open a flyout menu containing your saved projects. Double click the project downloaded from the 3D Model Store to open it. In many cases, it may be possible to use a technical drawing or photograph of your test structure to aid in creating a 3D model of it. In this case, we have multiple images and drawings of a hammer mill. Images can be applied to the background of any of the single directional views in Emiscope. To utilize the quad view, double click the structure window. In this case, the technical drawing of the hammer mill best aligns with the downloaded motor in the Y view. Select the Y view by double clicking in that window. To add an image to the Y view, select File, Options. This opens a dialog box. On the Display tab, there is a section called Background Image. Click the drop down menu and select Y view. Then click Import and select the image you wish to use. Be sure to click the box to disable auto scaling, which will prevent the structure window from rescaling as you add objects to it. Using the scroll wheel on the mouse, reduce the size of the motor to the size of the motor shown on the technical drawing in the background. You may also need to hold down the shift key and click and drag the motor to get an accurate overlay on the background drawing. You are now ready to begin adding points and lines to the structure by overlaying them on the background drawing. We will first start with the coupler and coupler housing connecting the shafts of the motor and the hammer mill. We will hide the motor substructure to better allow us to view the background image. To add points, select Points from the object selection list. Then click the plus sign button on the toolbar to add points. This will create a new point on your structure with every click of the mouse. Each point will have a zero coordinate in the Z direction, which will be necessary for us to revolve our new substructure. When you have finished adding the points, you will need to connect the points with lines. To do so, select Lines from the Object Selection list and then click the plus sign button on the toolbar. Click two points in succession to add a line between those two points. If you need to zoom closer to be able to connect the points with lines, you may do so by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. When you 
are finished creating lines, click the plus sign again. You may notice that the points you have created do not align the way you wish. You can adjust the location of your points at any time, either by typing in the proper coordinates in the point list or by moving them manually with the click select tool. Before we can revolve the profile of the coupler housing and coupler we have just created, we must first create substructures of each. To do so, select Points from the Object Selection list and click the Click Select tool on the toolbar. While holding the Control key, select the four points of the coupler housing. Then select Draw, Add Selected Objects to Substructure. Select New Substructure and name the new substructure Coupler Housing. Be sure to unselect the substructure before moving on to the coupler. We do the same thing with the coupler, but this time we use the selection box tool to select all of the desired points at once. Again, we use Draw, Add Selected Objects to Substructure, and name the new substructure Coupler. We can create simple or complex cylindrical or spherical shaped structures by creating a point and line profile and then using the revolve command. In this example, we have created profiles for two new substructures, a coupler and a coupler housing. To revolve these substructures, we select the Drawing Assistant button on the toolbar. This opens Emiscope's Drawing Assistant. Select the Coupler substructure on the lower half of the Drawing Assistant. Notice how this enables tabs for editing the dimensions and position of the substructure, as well as for extruding and revolving. In this case, we wish to revolve the profile line we have created for the coupler, so we select the Revolve tab. Revolve tab offers several options, including the axis of revolution, the number of degrees we wish to revolve the profile line, and the number of points we wish the revolution to include. In this case, we will revolve our profile line about the x-axis, and we will input 20 points for our revolution to include. This will allow our revolution to look smooth in appearance, but will not add an unnecessary number of points to our model. To perform the same routine on the coupler housing, we select the coupler housing substructure, select the x-axis for revolution, verify that the revolution will include 20 points, and click the revolve button. At this point, you will likely want to view the coupler inside the coupler housing. To do so, unselect the drawing assistant button from the toolbar. On the coupler housing substructure list, select the Transparent button. This will allow you to see through the coupler housing to view the coupler as well. We also need to verify that our coupler and coupler housing line up with the motor shaft in three-dimensional space. Double-click the Y view to get back to the quad view, and then double-click again in the 3D view. Unhide the electric motor substructure. When we click and hold the left mouse button and drag to rotate the substructure, we can see that the coupler and coupler housing do not align with the motor shaft. To fix this, we return to the quad view and double click the Z view. Select the coupler and coupler housing substructures in the substructure window. Then select the Edit, Drag Selected Objects button from the toolbar. When we click, hold, and drag the coupler and coupler housing, we're able to properly visually align them with the motor shaft. 
We perform this task in the single axis view because we only affect the positions of the substructures in two dimensions. The extrude command works very similar to the revolve command in that it uses a created profile curve to extrude along an axis. In this case, we need to create profile curves for the hammer mill and support bases and rails and extrude them along the x-axis. We have imported another technical drawing into our x-axis view, created profile curves for the hammer mill and hammer mill base, and have created substructures of those curves. We are now ready to extrude the hammer mill base curve. Select the Drawing Assistant button on the toolbar and then select Hammer Mill Base Substructure. When we click on the Extrude tab, notice the options for Extrude Axis, Length, and Points. We know that we are going to extrude along the x-axis and we know from our technical drawing in the Y view that the length of the Hammer Mill Base is 44.6 inches. Let's select the five points of subdivision along the length of the extrusion to allow smooth animation when using interpolation. When we hit the extrude button, the curve extrudes along the x-axis and creates quad surfaces between each subdivision along the way. We perform the same steps with the hammer mill, but with an extrusion length of 33 inches. After completing our extrusions of the hammer mill and base and repositioning them appropriately, we need to close each end by creating triangle and quad surfaces. To do so, we select surface quads from the object selection list. A surface quad is created by selecting four points in succession. surface triangles are created in the same fashion. There is no advantage of using quads versus triangles. However, it isn't always possible to create surface quads, so surface triangles are used more often. In most cases, the goal of creating a 3D model is to represent our test structure as accurately as possible, including in color. This way, when we present our findings to management or clients, they can easily recognize the structure as it animates. In the case of this hammer mill, the electric motor was blue and the rest of the structure was green. Notice that our motor is already blue and the remainder of the structure is green. Also, it is easier to see the coupler and bearings with their transparent housings if they are different colors than the housings. To change the substructure colors, we select Substructures in the Object Selection list. Double-click on the color area of the substructure you wish to change. Notice on the substructure dialog box that appears that you can change the color of the points, lines, surfaces, and FEA objects associated with that substructure. Double click on the surfaces color box. You can select from a group of standard colors or select define custom colors, which will allow you to select from a full color palette. As you can see from this tutorial, we were able to create a detailed 3D solid model in a relatively short amount of time. 
Emiscope offers the drawing tools to create a limitless number of objects and structures to meet all of your engineering data animation needs.